come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. In our quest for total world domination, you can help us out with that by going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button. All of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you who are into the same crazy movies that we are. Mm-hmm. These are the internet radio superstars. Oh, I should say how you can do it by hitting that like or subscribe button. There you go. Uh, These are the internet radio superstars. (laughs) Sean. Michaela. Holly. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by. Holly. What we watched tonight. Tonight we watched Space Truckers. Mm, Directed by. Stuart Gordon. Ah, written by. Oh, it's Ted Mann. And Stuart Gordon. (laughs) And and Stuart Gordon, yes. yes. And what year did this come out? Uh, That's debated, but I'm going to say 96. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So Stuart Gordon, obviously, is a name that we all recognize. I would hope so. Because he directed classics such as... Reanimator. And... Just me? Okay. From Beyond? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we've done a couple episodes. I, was, yeah. I know. I think he's on the Saturday Night <laughs> Freak Show. You've got the notes. Yeah. Because I we, all knew. <laughs> we, did, um, we also did Robot Jocks way back in the day, That's which right. seems kind of in keeping with uh, the this movie. It, didn't we do something really recently, I thought? I, did we just talk about him recently? I, I feel like I mean, we he did. came up recently. Did he pass away? No, Sean, year? there was something you picked. Something came up recently about Stuart Gordon. Yeah. Society? No, I was thinking about so, that, too. Was society, society, he was a writer on, right? A producer or no, writer on it? That was uh, Brian Yuzna who worked with him. And Stuart Gordon. Stuff. They were, yeah. I don't think so. Man. I'm going yeah. to look like, yeah. we, just we have it? the technology. We, we have yeah. the ability. We had a big uh, Honey, I Blew Up the Kid discussion at one point. Yeah, that was on yeah. the Society episode. Because oh, um, Brian Yuzna worked on that yeah. with Stuart Gordon. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Stuart Gordon, obviously, he's known as a as a uh, horror master because he made you know Reanimator and From Beyond and these right. horror movies, but he also directed science fiction movies, like not just one. Like this isn't the first Stuart mm-hmm. Gordon science fi- sci fi movie, like right. the Wonderful Ice Cream Suit. Is it that a sci fi movie? I don't That's think so. Movie. But it's it just kid, popped it's up, and I'm movie. just like, what the hell is that? Okay, yeah. Oh yeah, they do kid stuff now. But he did once um, we pass Dagon. <laughs> Robot, yeah, because Dagon was like, uh, it seemed to me like I thought that Stuart Gordon had kind of like fallen off for a little while. Like, I didn't see his movies because he started making these dramas like uh, Edmund, right, yeah. with William H. Macy. He yeah. made King of the Ants with uh, George Went. Yep, that's he made Stuck with Stephen Ray. Um, but, and then, so where was Dagon? Dagon was Dagon uh, was 2001 after the Honey, oh, I the Kids TV show. Oh, okay. All right. So, so there you go. You know, made yeah. that jump. But he did these sci-fi movies because if I'm not mistaken, prior to this, he had done a movie called Fortress with mm-hmm. uh, Christopher Lambert. He had done Castle Freak before this. Which we did on our we show. We did on our yes. show, yeah. And then Fortress, yes, before mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Anybody see Fortress? No. Nope. Mm-hmm. All Why right. Not? It's like a, it's, a, it's an offense to be married, I think, in the in the future. And so... They throw oh. Christopher Lambert and his wife in this like maximum right. security prison. He has to fight his way out. It's an offense to be married. I think so. So why did they get married? So this is basically, <laughs> sure. so this is basically mean guns, <laughs> but maybe, with the offense to be married. Or maybe the, you can't have kids or something. And I mean, she gets oh. pregnant. Wow, so they throw that makes in. more sense. It like does a, make more a, sense. More, like an accident. Like yeah. I, you don't accidentally get married. <laughs> it's it's illegally, <laughs> illegally pregnant wife. There you illegally go. pregnant okay. wife. What a sentence. Yeah. I All remember right, I saw interested. that movie in the theater Did in you? like 1992 or something like that. That one actually came out theatrically, but uh, Space Truckers. Space Truckers? I don't recall a theatrical release for this movie. Well, because it didn't. Uh, I <laughs> it think it premiered it, on HBO, It right? didn't in the U.S. It had a theatrical release worldwide. Um, well, that's being generous. In a few places say. throughout the world. Um, but it did not have a theatrical release in the U.S. It did premiere on HBO. That is correct. Here in the states, because yeah. um, if I remember my uh, my Wikipedia, uh, <laughs> the uh, the success of Fortress that like caught everybody by surprise that people yeah. actually went to see it. Yeah, there's a Fortress two, I think, right? Um, I so, yeah. And so they used the money that, or something. It was like you know, hey, you know, we got to get this guy to make another movie for us. This is going to make uh, bank. 
So they gave him like twenty five million dollars to yes. make space truckers. Mm. Yeah. Where'd this idea come from? How much did it make? <laughs> it made one point six million dollars. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. It Ouch. does, right? It adds up. Yeah. <laughs> or, or it doesn't add up. Yeah. For this movie. It literally Sorry, doesn't. Movie. Yeah. yeah. Where'd this... Where, yeah, yeah, where, the, where? the U.S. premiere of this was 97. That's why I said earlier, like, it's debated if you say 96 or 97. Technically came out in 96. U.S. 97. Okay. Because yeah. the movie that we saw had no logos on it. It was like Goldcrest Entertainment or something yeah. like that. Part yeah. of the production. Um but it does. It did. I mean, twenty five million dollars is not like uh, you know something to sneeze at. I wouldn't no. consider that Especially like a low budget. Especially not in the mid nineties. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Does the movie? Did you get the impression that it was a big budget movie? Eventually, kind of. Mm. Kind of. Yeah, not kind of. Not really. Did it have it, the same budget as, say, uh, Super Mario Bros.? I was just going to say, co- to me, it has it like, feels yeah, like, yeah, it feels it feels like it. Exactly but like is it, like is it yeah. cheap, deliberate? Is it deliberately looking cheap? Is that part of the That's, vibe of the movie I mean, to look cheap? You know what I'm saying? I think they wanted this to just be like a, a natural progression of like human beings are still human beings in the future. We, you know, we still do trucking and all that shit. Uh, we just happen to do it in space now. So. Oh. Yeah, but I think so. But beyond that, I mean, the and I don't know. You you're, you're saying that uh, uh, Super Mario Brothers was on your mind? Yes, yes a not, lot. Not just because, not of, just because Dennis of Dennis Hopper, Hopper but, but just it was, right. Yes. So there's like the a general production vibe. design or something that's there's going a on here. Scumminess. Is it scummy? <laughs> this is. I have a bias. I guess I'm going to say like right up front to like this type of production, a uh, '90s production design, where it's just like we're going to take. Uh, it's like there is no production design. It's like we're just going to take a bunch of shit that doesn't seem to match right. and throw it all together. We're going to assault all of your senses at the yeah. same time. The frame is always packed with people, yeah. junk, and there's just like, it's like they don't, the production designers are just like, we're going to take a slinky. We're going to like yeah. expand the slinky and we're going to throw it over a girder and have a girder yep. in the background. And that's your, you know, it's, I mean, <laughs> the background. That's the wiring. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you mentioned Demolition Man, and I, I think that's a fair comparison of like an organized vision mm-hmm. for, yeah, yeah, yeah. for design whereas this it's like it wanted to be that but didn't quite know how to get there wow. that's well, why it looks it's like a trashy like, um, version right yeah, yeah it is if we just it make is. everything look like trash yeah well, this is like yeah this is like trashy space <laughs> like I mean, consumer, you know? but, also, but also because like it's like space truck stops yeah, yeah. exactly so it makes sense to, you yeah know? yeah the design aesthetic also has a lot of primary colors in yes. it. Like just right. all the random. primary colors at the same time. But see, this is like a thing. Like you remember, was it uh, Screech on Saved by the Bell? Had right. that, yeah. That shirt that had like the squares and the yeah. triangles. Geometry, and like, yeah. yeah. Okay, so was that a thing? Maybe like yes. we're yeah. locking in on something from the 90s. That was yeah. absolutely oh, yeah. a thing. Yeah. So that's what every frame of this movie looks like. We're yep. just going to yeah. put a bunch of shit. On yep. screen, and yeah. going to be yep. yeah. geometry uh, clothing weird, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Weird shapes everything looked there. like a trapper keeper. Yeah, yeah. Yep. no, but I mean, in the movie, it's just uh, it right. is just the, shapes yeah, the, that don't. It's yeah. like yes, there the was no idea. design. The same <laughs> yeah. idea is with it. We're just yeah. right. like it's a squiggle, and now it's a design. Yeah. That was yeah. the nineties, right? You know, there's. I think the cinematography in this movie is straight up bad. It's bad. It's there's very that one bad. scene that, where they were like where it's drifting. There's just tons of oh, there was a scene that where they were in the ship where the Three people in the scene are all like having a serious conversation and two people are on their ends with their faces cut in half off the screen and it's like wobbling and shaking yeah. around. And I'm like, yeah, this is straight up horrible cinematography oh, yeah. right here. It's not good. There's they no try to do, geography is, or spacing or anything. Like well, it's that. too bad because uh, Mac Alberg's a cinematographer and like he did House and, you know, a bunch of movies that that we've seen. And then John Landis famously like said he was going to try and rescue Mac, Mac Alberg from like low budget movies. <laughs> And he started making <laughs> movies with him. Um, but like Metal Storm. He did Metal Storm. Ah. Uh, he did a bunch of those early Charles you Band things. You know, guys, things. I have a good idea for uh, Charles Dance's arm. Just hear me <laughs> out. I'm I thinking did. a claw. Yep, I did Metal Storm. Go, go, go on. His name was Ball. <laughs> you got to go back and check out our Metal Storm, The Destruction of Jared Sin. Jeez, that was Always probably episode. like four or five years ago. Oh, yeah. Point, for so. own stuff. I listened to it the other day. I'm yeah. just like, okay. I like just saying that complete title. Um, In but 3D. The, yeah. uh, the cinematography, so like this movie, because it's uh, set in space, they, they try to do a lot of stuff that's um, like, uh, well, I mean, like weightlessness. They're trying weightlessness. Okay. Or they're trying to, they're trying to, to 
get across weightlessness and magnetic shoes. Yeah. When the joke works. Yeah. When the joke works, they bring it up. But I guess, for instance, there's a lot of stuff that seems, I mean, I guess, you know, 2001 kind of sets the tone for this, right? Like, how does uh, gravity work in space? And you've yeah. got, they have a diner in this movie that kind of functions like the inside of, what was it, the Discovery? Was that the name of the ship in... Um, in 2001 you know oh, the one yeah, that, yeah. where yeah, yeah. he's going for the jog yeah, yeah, yeah. it's the revolving yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like set. a hamster wheel <laughs> yeah. yeah and that's basically. what they do here you know for this diner but right. like all the shots in the diner are not square on they're all canted angles so it's right. like not only do you have like the walls are the floor as it goes up but yeah. the camera's canted too and it gives you this kind of psychological like I, I the think fuck? they're trying to shoot around a set in that specific instance because I obviously that thing doesn't go up all the way around. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'll bet they had probably not quite half a thing and mirrors set no, up maybe, maybe, to, a, yeah. to look like it was elongated. And I can see that. Point. So yeah. they had to shoot a certain way so they don't get the cameras in the mirrors. I this is what it felt like. I can like see that. To do. It definitely felt like that. It's like, well, we can shoot it, but yeah. we shoot around it. But there bit. was a lot of instances like that where it's it's like it's not a round room, it's not a square room, it's like a like hexagon room mm -hmm. like there yeah. was there was like part of the space capsule like there was like a hexagon where they were like walking sideways yeah, yeah. they did that several like times. all the music videos of this time yes yeah. they always had you know people walking up the walls and running in the I walls mean, once you figured out like that, that technology yeah. music videos were changed forever. yes they really were and this <laughs> was happening right now yeah. like a year away from corn at this point yep exactly yeah. <laughs> In sync is doing filming it right now yeah. where the room's rotating and they're on the ceiling yep <laughs> yeah well, I guess we should uh, we should say who's in this movie. Who are the stars of Space Truckers? Uh, Dennis Hopper. Dennis Hopper. I mean, that's like a pretty moment. big deal. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. This is pre Water World, post Water World. Fits right in. I think <laughs> this is, is post okay. Water World. Ninety six was Water World. Yeah. Oh, so this would have been made same right time, around the same yeah. time or I whatever. Think so. Water World. Yeah. But I mean, it's a lead role for Dennis Hopper. Yeah, I mean, right. obviously, he did a bunch of stuff, but I don't know about big sci fi stuff other 95. than like. Yeah, right. I was like, it was Super Mario cool. Brothers. Yeah. Well, yeah. okay. Yeah. All right. That was 93? Yeah. It was King mm -hmm. Koopa. Yeah. Yep. I mean, Dennis Hopper was huge in the 90s, right? Like, he's always been, like, like speed. speed. Come yeah. on. Like, Where he does was... Blue Velvet fit in this timeline? Oof. Yeah. <laughs> does, he, does he do, like, that the same year he's doing Space Truckers? What no, range? That was uh, 86. But I think, yeah. I think Blue Velvet was, in some way, the movie that gave Dennis Hopper, like, his second wind. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And kind of propelled him into in all these, uh, mm -hmm. these bigger movies. Yeah. Um, uh, so well, you also have Stephen Dorff. Stephen Dorff, yeah. This oh, is thank God. Pre, this is pre Blade. <laughs> pre Blade. Yeah. Right. That was ninety six or ninety nine, ninety eight, ninety seven. I was here <laughs> blanking on all the I facts was thinking today. It's a lot but harder I could be to wrong. peg down the nineties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Far. They all kind of blurred together. But yeah. it seems okay. like this was pre his. Uh, I mean, I don't know if that. This was... feels like a very early yes. Yeah. yeah, I think so. This um, also pre Britney Spears video every time. Anybody? Right. Oh right, yeah. Right. <laughs> yep. Yep. I'm just saying. Right. But uh, and Debbie Mazar. Debbie Mazar yes. yep. is yeah, also the queen. in this. Debbie the lovely Mazar. Debbie Mazar. Yeah, I love her. Um, and Has she ever. <laughs> She ever in a different accent in any? No, every, no, any movie? no. You hire her because, because she's you Debbie Mazar. Like yeah, that. yeah. I was yeah. just wondering if she ever yeah. like tried it. If it ever was a thing, like at one point she's like, maybe I'll try something different. And she's like, no, I'm from New York. <laughs> do, you, I'm doing it. do you guys remember how amazing she was in Beethoven's Second? No. Oh, God, yes. God, <laughs> yes. She was Regina. Okay. Michaela, that's going on your tombstone. <laughs> <laughs> Love Debbie Mays. No, that's like when Beethoven I first Sega. fell in love with her as a kid. I was like, she's was she the, the best. She was the best. She was the coolest villain I'd ever seen in my life. She wore red leather trench coats and had big hoops. Uh, and she was just like, she was like, the, she was kind of like, shut up that dog. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> she was the, like, the, like, Staten Island Cruella de Vil. And it was. Uh, she fucking really was. awesome, she really okay. was. and and she, and she had like a henchman that was a bumbling idiot. I fucking uh -huh. fucking loved her, and that movie. she I was great. About that movie yeah, in years. yeah. And I just well, I love think about a lot more next week. <laughs> I love that she has that old Hollywood look. You know, yeah. like the eyes and her like her jawline and just to her face, she's like old Hollywood. I always loved her as um uh. One of Two Faces girls in Batman Forever. Yeah, her and Drew Barrymore. Yeah, exactly. She yeah. was the good and she was the bad. Yeah. Drew Barrymore was the yeah. good. She was the bad. I, I love that, that contrast. True. Those two together. Yeah. I just thought they were great. She's just got those piercing yeah, eyes those that eyes. just look Fucking right through hell. you. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. it's all ruined with the accent. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it depends on how you feel. Like, I mean, yeah. about a New York accent. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know how, I don't know the sex appeal for you guys with that, but mm -hmm. I think it's fun. Mm -hmm. And Blade was 98, by the way. Okay, 98. There 98, you go. Yep. And uh, the other uh, major uh, performer in this movie is Charles Dance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, having the time of his life. Yeah. Apparently I so. We, I think we with decided. A, with a ripcord junk. I mean, <laughs> I think it's right up there with Last Action Hero. He's having a good time in He's that movie, too. Time. Time. Yeah. I love being an over-the-top villain. Is yeah. he my favorite villain He's ever? He's a really yeah, great He's, villain. He yeah. might be. I love well, him. Well, just because of the stuff that he chooses to do. I mean, mm, like, you so know. Fun. he's Well, Game of Thrones seemed like, you know, it's like, okay, well, you're going to you're gonna cast somebody with gravity. Right, mm -hmm. you got it. Yeah. Charles Dance has done like all yeah. these uh, Merchant Ivory movies right. and whatever. But like the first time I ever saw him was The Golden Child, right? Mm. <laughs> Where he was the bad guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Long hair, he's got an eye patch in that movie. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think he can turn into a rat. Yeah. What? Yeah. What is this he, movie? He can <laughs> Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy. No, was I, the Golden I Child. forgot about that movie. <laughs> yeah. There's oh a, my god! There's a snake lady in that movie. I think it's a weird. It's a weird movie. Sounds like it. That might be a good freak show. Yeah. That's always been uh, yeah. there in the, in the floating ether. around out there. Yeah. That'd be a good one. Um, <laughs> it's kind of there's some funny stuff in it. So how do we get into this movie? Well, the movie brings Charles Dance is how we get into this movie, yeah, or like pre pre title uh, sequence. It right. sets we have everything a cold up. Open. Well, yeah. it's a hot open, really. <laughs> it's an action packed open. Yes. Um. That we can't remember. No, like, <laughs> it's an action-packed, spectacular so it, Because it's, it's just so odd. Remember. It's like, you don't really know who these people are or anything. You just know that there's like a, an invasion happening yeah, on like a ship. Yeah, we get into this right in the middle of it, and they're setting yeah. up like gun turrets at a, at a just door. Just like in Star Wars. I was going to say, it's very New Hope. <laughs> yeah. It's very New Hope opening. Yeah. <laughs> there's someone coming through the door, and we have yeah. to set up the defenses for it. Yeah. Like yeah. Even, and, even like the way they're positioned in front of the door, it's yep. very New Hope. Yep. <laughs> and it's Charles Dance and the guy who ran the uh, the water service in Batman Begins. Yes. Yes, it uh, is. <laughs> it's the only other thing I, I, love, I love that like, poll. Yeah, exactly. Counts said that and i laughed at first and i thought i was like actually i know exactly who he's talking about though <laughs> yup <laughs> um, the uh but okay so what what what's coming through the door here what are they protecting themselves against right so there is like some sort of uh i mean at, at this point we don't really know what it is it's just some, some sort of like killer robot thing yeah it's just this menacing thing that's coming through the door and it's killing all of the bodyguard soldier people Think of it as like the, uh, it's like the mechanical version of like uh, the sill from yeah from. Uh, I mean, come on, Eve, it looks like an HR it's an alien kind of thing. It with does like a different. I mean, like yeah. if you made a yeah. robot of the alien, yeah. right? Yeah, it kind of moves like that. Um, the big thing is it has, if you imagine like the alien head, like a squared off version of the alien head with three mm -hmm. big red uh, eyes mm -hmm. on right. the front Apparently of it, evaporate and laser you. Yeah, that was cool though. Mm -hmm. That's a lot I, of I this like that. Cool. Yeah. cool. Yeah, I liked it at the beginning. Yeah, because all the guys who got set up for the turrets, they all get lasered, and all we see are just leftover feet. Yeah, 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 like but not bloody. Down. They it, the, the effect okay. that it used yeah. there. It's like <laughs> it's like a metallic version of the tricolor foam that you get at the car wash. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, like that. That's the best way I can describe yellow, it. It's a good way to get like white yeah. bubbles. Like yeah. yeah, it's very bubbly, yeah. like sudsy. Yeah. It's weird. Like, yeah, it's like neon. cauterized. I yeah. guess when it like zzz, goes through. But them. this yeah. is my first like. I don't want to say red flag. But this is my first like thing with this movie that I'm you like, can okay, say red flag. <laughs> like, what's the tone here? Is this for kids or is this for adults? Great question. Because yeah, if this is <laughs> if this is for adults, why are we not showing real blood? Okay. Yeah. Right. Is, because this Stuart isn't... Gordon has is very conflicted in his in his uh, filmography. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, <laughs> like kid friendly. He forgot. Or... He's like, am I doing a kids one this time or am I doing my new, my usual stuff? Yeah. I don't remember. Let's just do it all. Oops, right. I think well, they're that, trying for more comedy. <laughs> later on, that you know, the fact that it was Stuart Gordon, there was a scene where I was kind of like, okay, how far are we going here? Because this is a Stuart Gordon right, movie. Right. right. Yeah. You know, then you're like, oh, okay, this is his kids version. <laughs> it's like rated R, right? This movie. It has yeah. to be. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Why? So <laughs> we find out that uh, Charles Dance has actually created this uh, this monster, yeah. this he's, robot. He's, thing. He does. He stops it with a remote. But I love when he says, "Okay, well, that's the end of this test." But in the background, there's just piles of piles bodies, of and piles of <laughs> bodies, <laughs> and feet sticking around. It's just like uh, that's funny. 
It's like, yeah. oh, well, this test is over. Everybody return to your station. I know, because I'm sitting there going, like, uh, does that mean that uh, like they weren't real people That's what or I something? thought, right? I mean, I'm like, were they real? Was this any of this real? Yeah, apparently, apparently so, They're because real. this yeah. was to test out the efficiency of this robot that he's created, which has some kind of laser weapon mm -hmm. that uh, nobody else has, and this thing can, like, decimate. Mm -hmm. One of them can, like, take out an army. And so with this, we can take over the world. Yeah. Which one? Earth. Okay. Earth. I've heard it's lovely there this time of year. <laughs> yeah. But the uh, evil, uh, what a major commander general. Uh, yep. Public works operator. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. Turns against Charles Dance and has him apparently vaporized. And then we cut to the uh, opening uh, title of the movie. Yes. And are yeah. introduced to our heroes who are space truckers. That's right. Okay, I well, love not this true. logo. Can we just talk about the logo? It does. Right? It has yeah. like a nice it's a great uh, logo. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's what you would put on like if Peter built. It's like a nice logo for the front of a truck. Yeah, mm -hmm. nice. I like it because we're getting eastbound and down. We got okay. It's not that cool, Colin. Okay. We're not getting any good music with this. We're not getting. <laughs> there is a down. song. We're not getting space trucking by Deep Purple. Yeah, uh, it's an for obvious real. miss for this. Movie. So what? Uh, what year did Space Trucker come out? Space trucking. Space trucking. Sorry, space like trucking. The seventies. That's yeah. yes, the seventies. Mm. Yeah, it was out. It was known. It was popular. Okay. That's probably why they couldn't call the movie space trucking. Yeah, yeah. space truckers instead. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Well, would you be interested to know that the soundtrack was created by Colin Towns, who played in a band called Gillen? Fronted Play, by wait, what was the name? The band. Yeah, Gillen. Spell it. Fronted by Ian Gillen. From Deep Purple. From Deep Purple. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That's what I was wondering. I'm like, spell Gillen, please? <laughs> I know who that is. That's why, like, when you were commenting, I was like, I'm going to save it. I'm going to save it. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> wow. That's great. Oh, yeah, so that's so why they picked him to. Yes. Yeah. 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 Wow. Really? Thank God there's yep. some connection. Yes, there is. <laughs> okay. And he couldn't write a song called. And we couldn't called... get it in the movie. I know. I'm no. sorry. Oh. They couldn't yeah, even write like... a song called Space Truckers. It's right there. Right. You couldn't just make a call? This movie cost $25 million. They had the Guess, budget to throw oh some God. money towards licensing, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 Well, no, no, no. We needed 10 robots in this movie yeah. instead of five. I know, because what was it? It's always famously like uh, James Cameron had four alien suits, I think, for mm -hmm. Alien. If how that, many, yeah, how many no robot that, suits did they make in this movie? Way too damn I would, many. I would say <laughs> probably like... It seems like there's a, at least four, well, on screen at once. On screen at once, I'll say, well, who knows if they're compositing one behind him. Probably yeah. like six. Yeah. Because I was thinking the most that we saw at once was when they were on the outside of the ship. Yeah. yeah. Who and knows was, how many times and there could have been an effect shot. Yeah, yeah. Shot. yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. so there's at least four. Uh, but it doesn't look like it's too, it would be too expensive to build these things. But why, why, why now? Yeah. Who knows what they spent their $25 million budget on? Right. Was it music? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, we should say these robots so were built by uh, Screaming Mad George, they the, were. Uh, All right. the, mm -hmm. the makeup effects guy that we seem to talk about an awful lot on, on this <laughs> we show. We like George. We like we do. Yeah. I mean, they're a cool design. It is. Right? Yeah, it is. It's a cool design. I like it. I, like I thought that. it was good. I thought the way the, because they had, uh, apparently it was... Uh, all women except one guy yeah. in the suits for this. And I love the way they're it was mostly stalking, stalking around. It's yeah. a little, um, yeah. it's very, I mean, it's very Power Ranger like, I'm a big monster and I have to move all my appendages to show you that I'm dangerous. Yeah. But, but there is I like, it. I like the, the design, like, shows like the hips and it's yes. like very feminine. It is very, mm -hmm. yes. And they had mostly women playing this this character and I thought it was. And there was just great. one dude with a great stash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I did the suits too. <laughs> but he well, does ballet. The um the who's uh what um what's uh Dennis Hopper's character's name? John. John Canyon. Don, John Canyon. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right? So then I'm like, is he, you know, uh offshoot of Harry Canyon from uh heavy metal, right? Because he was a blue collar right. taxi driver, no a space trucker, truck driver. Okay. Uh <laughs> so John sure. Canyon is Space truck driver, right? Because in the future you have these like uh, six hundred mile long uh, rigs that you're towing, mm -hmm. right? And he's taking it to. Uh, well, what's he taking first of all? Is he square pigs? Square, <laughs> square pigs? Square pigs? What are you talking about? Basically, like shipping crates where the pig has like grown into the crate. And it's yeah, you've seen how pig. we treat yeah. animals now, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's basically that expanded for the future. Yeah. They yeah. Are, yeah. The pigs are the shape of their cages and yeah. they can't move. Mm -hmm. So they yeah. are square pigs. Go shipping to inner pork. 
Interpork, yeah, which, which is the little... Oscar Mayer uh, logo. Yeah. Interpork. <laughs> yeah, I love when, no matter love cheap that. or not, I love when uh, movies do shit like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Me too. George Went is the uh, president <laughs> yeah. of the company. Yeah. George Went's in this. Yeah, well, he was in King of the Ants too, yeah. the Stuart Gordon movie. So A certified genius, that man. <laughs> <laughs> For his uh, role selection. Uh, no, actually, I think he's a certified genius. What yeah. really? Yeah. Like he this is, is a thing? Oh yeah, I look it up. I'll look really? it up. <laughs> look it up. He's, he's certified. He's very. I smart. mean, about this. did Norm? he say, did he say that about himself? No, no, no. Like who <laughs> certifies you as a genius? No, yeah. well, Mensa. Is he yeah. like a Mensa? I'll look it up. Well, um, <laughs> so we get a life. You of, said that like we all knew that. <laughs> certified <laughs> genius. Yeah, George Wendt. Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, we get a look at what the uh, you know. So this is basically blue collar living in the future. Right. Right is uh you know he get we get a look at like a it's a space station or something that he goes to to unload his right. uh his merchandise but because he's two days late uh George Wentz not going to pay him what he owes yeah. him and ends up stealing his uh cargo but uh and then gives the cargo to Steven Dorf to to ship right so who's Steven Dorf in this movie Steven Dorf is a uh recent space truck driving school graduate <laughs> He's an up and comer. He's going to be the new like hot shit truck driver. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and he is, we first meet him at this space, the, the round, space diner. Yeah. Yeah. The rotisserie the diner. Was it called the hub? I think. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I like the design of that place. I that might too. be my favorite set because it probably because it was the one that had open space. Yeah. Yeah. It was like the, the white and the openness mm -hmm. made it not feel so cluttered like you were saying, Colin, mm -hmm. in every other scene in the movie. Well, I also like that, you know, uh, because, you know, you know, outside the movie, you know that it's a big rotating set. So, you know, yeah. like all these people are like strapped into their positions. Right. So like yeah. as the thing kind of rotates mm -hmm. and then they have to, you know, they have to start acting when they come down to like mm -hmm. a certain, uh, right. you know, ground level. I'm always interested in when we watch like these futuristic space movies. I'm obviously we're, I'm always interested in the design of the wardrobe. I'm curious mm -hmm. to see where they're going to go with it, and I'm always curious of the food choices they're going to have. Yeah, this I is love what seeing we, futuristic space food. Futuristic what is it going to look like? Fashion and food. Yeah, yes, I'm always fascinated. Hot dogs like, still exist. Yeah, like <laughs> like everything at, else. Is at one point, at one point when they're on the ship, they're like eating what looks like a tube of toothpaste and it's supposed to be like their space breakfast or whatever. But when they're in the diner, they have like burgers and fries. Yeah. It opens with Dennis Hopper eating a hot dog. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, so why the, why the toothpaste food? I yeah, don't understand. I don't Is it just like when you take like a protein bar when you go on a road trip? I guess, maybe. You know? oh. yeah. I think the toothpaste food was probably just hot dogs shoved into a tube. <laughs> <laughs> and so they're just eating it like that. Or it's because he bought the, uh, what was the name of the, the, it wasn't the pachyderm. Was oh, it his, the his rig? Yeah, oh, what was it called? God. But he bought it with no options, so it doesn't right. have like you know There's heating, cooling, and you know like it doesn't have a service. fridge. Right. Yeah, there you go. That yeah yeah. So he's got tubes of food. <laughs> That's yeah, true. that's true. Um, so anyway, the Debbie Mazar is mm -hmm. uh, she's a, Cindy, a she's the waitress at the at, hub. Yeah, and. There's the idea that Dennis Hopper, who's like 50 years old, yeah, right, and she's like. 22? I don't know. Yeah, gotta be, yeah right? she's... <laughs> gotta be. Yeah, they look like they could be father and daughter, that's for yeah. sure. And he's, like, in love with her. Yeah, because they have had some kind of previous relationship yeah. that it's implied, but now he wants to marry her. But now this hot shot Mike is coming into the Stephen Dorff characters yeah. in the picture. Is someone age appropriate? How dare he? Yeah. I know, right? Yeah. So now the whole subplot of the movie is basically going to be, like, is someone moving in on Dennis Hopper's girlfriend because he makes a deal with her she, her mom's yeah, her like mom's on earth on earth she's sick she's been in the hospital and she needs to get to on earth but apparently it's super expensive to get a ticket to earth so dennis hopper promises he will make her a deal he will get her to earth if she agrees to marry him yeah, which she does in order to 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 get to earth but the way that they're going to get to earth is how uh he makes a deal to take this like super secret uh, cargo shipment to Earth. Yeah, because he's talking to Mr. Zesty, I believe. Is <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is, is Zesty. what his character name is? There is. Yeah, like, it whatever, was, whoever it was, this is, I like what they're Bertie doing. Sweeney. He's an Irish actor because I think the movie was actually shot in Ireland. It, I was. it was like part of tax yeah. breaks or something. Yes, it was. <laughs> but I mean, it doesn't look, you know, I keep going, it doesn't look cheap. Yeah. It, you know, like it looks like this movie has big ass sets and, you know, mm -hmm. like stuff to the rafters with 
you know. And the CGI, and the best CGI they could afford Oof. at the time in 1996. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was CGI. <laughs> no, not, okay, if you're not, uh, if you're not Jurassic Roland Park. Roland Emmerich yeah. Yeah, at right. that point. Because, <laughs> well, that's, I mean, Independence Day came out at the same time. Yeah. 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 But, so, you know, ooh, that comparison. Yeah. Mean, but okay. what what was the budget on Independence Day in comparison? Uh, 150 million? You think? The most expensive. No, movie. there was uh, like million? 87 million. In so you're making things look, look, look worse. Okay. Um, <laughs> but there is a scene where George I'm Wendt guess it was gets the first uh, one that went over 100 million. George Wendt gets sucked out of a air or not an airlock. It was 75 million. Dollars. 75 million. Wow. Which I know 50 million in 90s dollars is a lot of money, but I feel like the difference in CGI between these two movies feels <laughs> way more than 50 million dollars different, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The, the CGI is not its strong point. Oh, what did you think about like all the makeup effects and stuff? Because Greg Canham Good. also worked on this. He did fun, the yeah. if, if nothing else, fun. I actually really like uh, Charles Dance's whole look because yeah. when we see him later on, he's like half man, half robot. Yes. And the it's like the skin is like grafted to the robotics and there's like a clear it's very like, uber jason there's yeah there's yeah. Clear, clear paneling with like yes. with mechanics it's i don't know but he'll have like pouches where like muscle or something should be that are like have like fluid and hoses in them yeah. like he has two like 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 aquarium tank butt cheeks he, he does, does. He which does. like yeah and I, i'm like, glad that was made specifically for that reveal just i like, just what? I think about the like work that goes into that and I'm just like, holy <laughs> shit. Like to build all that stuff and then put it on him and for how many days did they have oh, to yeah. do that? Oh, it's yeah. a full body prosthesis because he got it's burned uh, yeah. on his uh, half of his yep. uh, face and he, you can see his exposed brain or that whatever. He's, that he's rebuilt. Right. He he's completely like naked at one point in time yeah. and he's in full body prosthetics. Yeah. Like, yeah. wow, Charles Dance went the distance for this movie. He right? did, yeah. 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 He really did. I always thought it'd be funny if like, because he's got liquids in him and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. If he had like a pet fish in there. Yeah, yeah that like would be funny. Like Elton John shoes. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like that, but yeah. it's just swimming around his body. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's a uh, Ted. Yeah. That's genius. Copyright yeah. that. I've seen yeah. that though. The, uh, is it, was that an Elton John thing? The, the high. In the shoes? Yeah. Yeah, he had like fish in, in the shoes. Oh, okay. Because yeah. I saw They definitely that in, died uh, immediately. I'm going to get you sucker. Virgin. You remember oh, yeah. that movie with yeah, the. Yeah. Um, So the plot contrives to basically get so you got dennis hopper is thrown together good. with uh <laughs> steven dorf who is after his girlfriend debbie mazar and they all have to get on a truck because george went gets sucked out of a window yep which ass I mean, first why are you firing guns inside any sort of spaceship I, craft yeah. ever because uh your uh your lackeys aren't always smart they're not smart people your henchmen are dumb yeah. That's why they're henchmen. That's why they're not running this. I mean, this. as funny as it was seeing George Wendt get sucked through that that tiny ass window, it bugs me whenever any like window or door gets opened in space and nobody and people don't immediately die. That drives me fucking mm -hmm. nuts. Mm -hmm. Well, because James Cameron actually did the uh, equation at one point of how much oxygen per volume there would be and how much time you would have right. when that like. Uh, the door opened in aliens. He figured out like how much they would have to breathe. You don't apparently immediately uh, explode. No, no, because no. the oxygen has to get out. Right. There is a, a volume of air that has to escape. So you have a little bit of time. You're going, it should be instant. It all goes out. If you it's know, a tiny if you little hole space, though. I think that you, you would immediately do the freeze thing. Yeah. 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 Like your don't your like fucking eyes explode and shit? I don't know. Or do I you think, just like freeze instantly? Have we, have like these are all things? reasons to never go to space. Yeah, your yeah. Blood have we boils. never done this? Yeah. Um, experiment though. We should. Yeah. Somebody will volunteer. Somebody's calculated this. Some good person out there is listening to our show. There is a book somewhere that explains exactly yeah. what happens yeah. to the human body when it goes into space. Probably that doesn't actually happen in in this movie. Nobody right. does explode no, in space. No, but cool. This was a gory. Gross scene. <laughs> Be yeah, cool if what? something like that happened well, here. Is it playing it for comedy when yeah. he gets yes, sucked that's out the, the problem. problem? It's absolutely yeah. yeah. Not abject horror like Alien Resurrection when the big white baby alien gets sucked out the window. Yeah, but these are the things. Fall out and he's screaming. When I'm watching a movie like this, and it's like it, the humor is so juvenile, but some of the other content is so adult. I'm like, who the fuck is this for? Right. Is this yeah. for kids or is this for adults? I can't figure it out. Very confusing. Entry level horror. Because it didn't feel like a comedy. I think it wanted to be, but mm -hmm. it didn't quite make the mark. I mean, did you forget about the chainsaw penis? Yeah. Like, poem? That like, was funny. Mm -hmm. That was funny. That is purposely. And that didn't, built uh, okay. To yeah, yeah, I get it. But it, it's yeah. a weird tone. 
Um, it is oh, a weird, very weird tone. tone. Yes, it doesn't feel like it's in the comedy lane. It does all I this wouldn't kind call of this a comedy. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like it's doing this this these bizarre things to be funny, but they're like they're they're like at right angles to the plot. Yeah. Or something. Exactly. It's, it's very strange. Mm-hmm. Um, the, well, I think maybe that's to hide the quote unquote plot you were talking about because there isn't not, much. Oof. So what happens in this movie is our <laughs> heroes are on the run. Well, okay. So did we say they have, uh, they've taken this shipment of, mm-hmm. they don't know what's in it. They don't yeah. know what it is. They have, and they, they can't have, open it and they can't detect yeah, it. Cause it'll like shoot a, them if they do. Right. They have like a forged invoice. So it pers- says it's sex dolls. It, yeah. It's literally called space sluts Inc. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it, anything could be a sex doll, especially a robot, right? I suppose. This is not, this is not an inaccurate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, this is not, not an inaccurate description. It's not a stretch. Right? But at this they don't point, look like sluts. I'll, I'll tell them that. We're all <laughs> sitting there at this point going like, well, it's a gigantic cargo ship full of those robots that we Happy. saw yep. at the very yeah, beginning of the movie. Sure. And they're on. This is how they're getting them to Earth. Exactly. Right. It takes the movie about 30 to 40 minutes for their characters to catch up with this information. That yeah. is yeah. like a detriment to the movie, I think. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. If they didn't have the opening scene. Actually, I think a lot of this movie would have played differently if you didn't have that scene with Charles Dance at the beginning of the movie setting it up. Do you right. think they had that somewhere else in the movie and then moved it there? No. Like, we need- I think they wrote it this way okay. that we saw it, but I'm just saying it's like plot-wise that told you too much. It would have been better to uncover that yeah. as you uh, were watching it. Mm-hmm. Um, so then I guess it becomes a movie of... Um, Events, uh, you know, Minor like inconveniences. That yeah, they have to get but over. well, life-threatening inconveniences, I would say. But the whole structure of the movie is basically that, like, oh no, and then this thing broke down, and oh yes. no, then there's these uh, like asteroids that you can't see because they're black rock, you know, out in the darkness. <laughs> black, black rock, years. black rock. <laughs> uh, you know, Which then I liked. I'm just like, oh, our heater, <laughs> our, our cooler coolant was hit, and so now you know. One uh, thing the, after the another. Space truck yeah. breaks down, and then they think they're going to like boil alive in there, and then pirates show up to save them. But not before uh, Stephen Dorff. Right. They make out in their underwear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's getting hot. Because yeah. mm-hmm. it's too hot in there. They got to take their clothes it's off. It's getting hot in oh. here, so we're going to take off all our clothes. Yeah. Yep. I feel so yep. much better. That was the weirdest. <laughs> that was the funniest. Look, I'm floating in air, and I feel great. <laughs> when they I, have, the way they have to shoot people in this tip achieve the um the look of weightlessness yeah. like oh there's always a part of them that's off screen and that is the part that's being held up in the yep, air exactly sometimes. and i have to be like whoa weightlessness <laughs> yeah. is weird yeah <laughs> i have great respect for the actors in this movie to be honest with you like i do like they were like you know uh, treating all this which always kind of uh, watching movies like this kind of pull black pull back the lens on like just yeah. how fucking ridiculous the life of an actor is, especially <laughs> if you're in fantasy films right. or, you know, yeah. where it's like, man, they're committed. You know, it's like they're trying to sell it as best they can mm-hmm. as they are strung up in wires, which we can clearly see. <laughs> and yeah, you know, like, I felt bad for how many days they had to spend in their underwear. Yeah, a lot. A lot. So much. Well, that was Jeez. my point kind of going yeah. into it. It's like this scene exists, obviously, to give some kind of sexual tension between those two mm-hmm. characters while... Dennis Hopper is uh, outside doing an errand or whatever to try and uncouple something. But basically what it does is it gets our main characters in their underwear for like 40 minutes of the movie, which is like, Mm -hmm. this is interesting. And then for about 20 minutes of that, it gets them handcuffed uh, (laughs) in the pirate ship Mm -hmm. where they can't do anything. Yeah. This is a bizarre, uh, you know, like, because then it's like, so what's the action that they're taking part of? They're not. They're a prisoner and being yeah. held captive. Yep. And then this is where we're reintroduced to Charles Vance. He's turns out to be pirate commander, all mm-hmm. dressed up like a Nazi commandant. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, when he shows up and then underneath it's a reveal that underneath he has this like full body press. Right. Because they're uh, on their pirate. He does come out with a peg leg. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pirates. Yep. So why Got not? It. We're going to do that. Because this Which man, was funny. I did think that yeah, was funny. Because was funny. This man <laughs> created out. an advanced race of robot uh, slaves. Warriors, warriors. they called in yeah. the biomechanical but warriors. He yes. could not make himself a proper foot. 
<laughs> yeah, right. Like, or right. a proper arm. Maybe he or... likes the aesthetic of Maybe. I don't know. He did rebuild stuff. his own brain. As yeah. I rebuilt my own brain. <laughs> my own mm-hmm. mind. My own mind. <laughs> <laughs> he but had he gets some <laughs> great lines. Is. Is. Like I said, he's doing the best. Yeah. yeah. Right. He's the MVP, I think. Of yeah, the, he's of the having club. fun. Easily, yeah. Uh, I, I, he may not care if anybody else is. He's just like, look at me. I get to dress up in this right. shit and then smoke a cigar the whole day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe he probably had the best time of his life. But these pirates haven't seen a woman in uh, forever, and so he makes a deal with. Well, they keep murdering them. <laughs> Debbie Mazar, that if she sleeps with him, because uh, he's you know beauty uh, gives me beauty a wide birth or something yeah. like that, you know. Uh, Talking that, about your wide birth, <laughs> he'll, he'll let them. Or this is what he says, right? Yeah. He'll let them. Uh, you know, I'll let you leave. Yeah, mm-hmm. without their cargo. Right, but you can live. Yeah, Dennis Hopper's uh, response to all this is basically like just a piece, a piece, a piece. Oh, like, yeah. Shut know. up and let him fuck her. Yeah. <laughs> Get out of here soon. Yeah. At one point, I'm pretty sure he basically says like, oh, she's done this before. Yeah, yeah. it's not yeah. the like, first time. She's taken yeah. one for the team. Mm-hmm. It's a very survivalist kind of like uh, uh, frame of mind. But I mean, a lot of stuff is always he is in the position of like, you know, I'm not trying to offend you. It was like, we're, we're not going to have a last stand here. Mm-hmm. We're going to survive by basically like trying to placate uh, the pirates and then Charles dance. And then the oh, president, what was, what was his line on. at one point? He was like, I like how you handle handle yourself with your disability. Or something yeah. Like that. Yeah. 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 That's not true. I think you're handling your disabilities very well. Yeah. <laughs> just like, no, you're doing great. Yeah, Stephen Dorff, of course, <laughs> just wants to, you know, like get in there. Stephen Dorff is so dramatic. Like when they first are, when they're about to be picked up by um, Charles Dance and the pirates and everything. Like the three of them are trying to figure out what to do, and Stephen Dorff's only thing is just like, if we can't get out of here, I'll sh- I'll kill us all. I'll shoot you. I'll shoot us both. <laughs> it's like it's like, calm down, dude. Like. <laughs> I definitely feel like Dennis Hopper's view on this is just like, oh, we'll, we'll talk to them. It'll be all right. And we'll get through this. He's like, no, we die. We die. I will not go back to jail. <laughs> he's like, I'll shoot you first and then I'll shoot me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's very drastic. Oh, yeah. He was like ready to do it, too. Give me a gun. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Um. So they're held captive, and then she has this. Okay, so then so like this scene and the reveal of his entire body. <laughs> yeah, because basically they retire to his bedchamber. Charles dances right, right. where where uh, there is sexy netting. We yep, have, yep. Sex, there is sexy netting. There's seven different types of uh, what does it call it? Um, oh yeah. To to anesthesia. Se- seven different uh, like uh, like sedatives. Yeah, yeah. Sedatives. yeah. yeah. There's, there's seven different. Sedatives. We have alcohol. We have. I think he was cocaine. Was cocaine. Cocaine. Yeah. Okay. Not a sedative. Not a sedative. Quite the opposite of a sedative, yeah. actually. But yeah. 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 we never got to find out what the other five were. Yeah. Well, and she if he thinks cocaine is a sedative. I'd love to know what the other five were. <laughs> and she decides to go into this stone cold sober. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah. like, no, give me everything. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, even like. Sampler plate. But this movie doesn't even. I can't, this, this movie's got to be for kids. It's like, it doesn't even go to, even when he reveals his body, she's like, where's the cocaine? Yeah, exactly. Like, don't even make that joke. Right. Nope. I'll, have, I'll that have that drink. I'll, I'll have that drink now. Yeah, yeah. That was right. an yeah, obvious yeah. joke. It's just the yeah. obvious. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, that's a joke. Like even that would be better than. Mm-hmm. Although the joke of him having to like start his dick <laughs> like God, a uh, lawnmower, <laughs> yeah, uh, was kind of funny. That was funny. That was very funny. <laughs> yeah, I funny. imagine Charles Dance didn't want to do this, and then he read that part and was like. Call my agent. <laughs> yeah. It was funny because he had to do it several times. Yeah. Not only that, yeah, because he's got to do it several times. It works. And he's like, excuse me, it has broken down. Yeah. I need a few moments. Yeah. And then he's like. And she's like, take your time. Yeah. <laughs> but then we cut back to him and he's got like a shelf of tools that mm-hmm. his, his back is turned off. So he's taking one, fixing it, taking it. Mm-hmm. Crank, crank, crank. It's very funny. He's like, we're back in action as he finally, you know. Gives it another poll and it mm-hmm. lights up. I was relieved that uh, he didn't actually get to carry through with it. We never actually see the uh, appendage. Yeah, which, action. come on. You're in a, <laughs> which I, what a literal really cock tease, man. I didn't really understand because it, he like falls down and he's like like spread eagle on the ground. Did like, it fall really, off? I was like, I don't really see. I mean, his yeah. leg did fall off as well. Yeah. So that may have been part yeah, of that. Because it was just like a cod piece. I yeah. down there and that I was it. I still maintain because at one point he was like, I've designed this to give the ultimate pleasure. I'm still... I still, I'm still of the mind that like I'd be kind of curious. Yeah, <laughs> Holly did declare. She's there, like, what you want to know? She's lying that she's not curious. Yeah. You know, the just, ultimate pleasure. All right, yeah. I got ten minutes or so. Yeah. Let's let's so, see yeah, what you I mean, got. You know, who yeah. knows? Maybe for him though. 
I mean, he did say for her. But yeah, he said for yeah, her. Designed yeah. for, but of course, like, he what's his lying. what's his frame of reference? He's also right. a space Nazi He's who crazy. rebuilt his whole body with yeah, claws. Yeah, yeah. Like, because yeah. doesn't it deliver an curious. electrical <laughs> charge also, like a minimum electrical charge, whatever? Uh, and hey, then, there's no res- risk of STDs in this situation. Right. So it sounds That's like true. this could no, be so much gangrene. worse. <laughs> and as I a Stuart mean, Gordon I'm, movie, you're curious about. Like, okay, what are we doing here? It sounds like he's willing to to give her the ultimate pleasure. So I'm sure, pretty sure if she gave him some guidance, he'd go with it. <laughs> yeah. Try some things. I'm yeah. very giving man. Yeah. I'm just saying she's probably going to die. So why not give it a shot? Mm-hmm. But she doesn't. She pulls one of his, uh, you know, uh, life tubes support out, yeah. uh, tubes. One of his right. ooze tubes. Yeah. <laughs> seems like a design flaw. If your tubes are that yeah, important to right. your life, like, they shouldn't be exposed like that, bro. Yeah. It's like, where are veins, dude? They're in the yeah. body. Like, yeah. Yeah. there's no way you could thread this through. Yeah. You're right. Just yank them out. Like, All yeah. these guys do this on their exoskeletons. I don't It'd be, know. Like, he to... could walk through a doorway and get it caught on yeah. and ripped out the way it is, you know? I love like, that. Standing in front of an open door and he goes, Whoosh. He's caught on a coat hook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shit, or, like, or like he's in a space car and you see it hanging out the side door. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> or, or he goes to fill himself up with more liquid and that gets stuck on him. Like, yeah. Actual gas I don't thing. know. So is he like Bane or whatever? Or he <laughs> has a little Bane the, uh, injection of the stuff to actually. Um, like they could have explored this more. Right? Yeah, I mean oh, we got some sure. good. You know, I don't sure. like how quickly this character exits right. the movie. I, don't I needed this character the whole movie. Yeah, yeah, because shouldn't he be? If he's introduced in the first scene, he's the main villain that has to carry through I, to the I end. I feel of like the he should be the big he bad. Should have been because yeah. what they do with the guy who did this to him doesn't. It's not a payoff. It doesn't. You know, no, it's yeah, not it worth like it. Technically, it comes back around, but not. Anything that's worth it. Yeah. 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 Because he does realize that the cargo is his, but it wasn't like he had a design on it. It was he accidentally captured the space trucker who accidentally had his cargo, you right. know, his robots yeah. on board. Right. He's like, okay, now we're going to take over the, the galaxy. And then the robots start coming to life and killing every single person on the ship. And so there's uh, explosions. And everybody yeah. dies except for the the ship. Or sorry, the, the space truckers are able to get away. And you know, so it's of, like yeah. that's the end. You've just solved the problem of uh, having all these pirates in the oh, movie, oh, yeah. where it was right. like maybe it would have been more interesting if you kept them alive. Yeah, yeah. put you know? some of them like. Not everyone died. Some of them get on the ship as as the as. They I thought leave. that was going to happen. Yeah, me too. Well, I thought one because I think that was one robot was activated at that point in time. Yeah. I thought maybe alien like that was going to end up being on the ship, but it turns out Charles Dance only uh, you know like his upper half has survived, yes. and he somehow uh, gets on board the 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 space truck. Yeah. And basically tells them, you know, this is what it is. It's a killer robot that I designed. Here's the remote control that you can turn them off with and whatever. And so then. Any of you lads have any use for this? (laughs) And there he goes. And then he's out of the movie. Yeah. It's unfortunate. What a waste. What a waste. It's disappointing. We got to talk about that scene when Debbie Mazar leaves his room, though. Oh, yeah. Like when she rips his tubes out and she gets away, she takes his hat, his His cigar, his coat, his eye patch and glasses. And this is the most like Bugs Bunny shit yeah. I've seen oh, yeah. in a movie yeah. in a yeah. Yeah, it is. It really yeah. is. It is. Like, and I I think I'm a little okay with it because I think Debbie Mazar pulls it off pretty well. But it's just like what 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 is the yeah. tone of this movie? I right. don't understand the tone. Yeah. Bugs Bunny is a great way to yeah play. because yeah. she's exactly pretending to matter. be him. But the guards apparently think that even though her stature is like is she looks nothing right. like him. Right, she's got two legs, and yeah. he doesn't. She doesn't speak. She just does hand signals. And mm-hmm. oh, you want me to leave now? The guard That's says. Like, oh, you, oh, want, you, to you kill want me? Him. Yeah. yeah. It's like what? yeah, it is like uh, Bugs Bunny. I mean, it's just yeah. goofy. It is. You yeah. know. Um, and in then, order to set them again, free so they can kids escape. Kids or adults, like it, like this feels like a like they a kids movie gag, you know? Yeah. So that's why I'm like, I don't understand what this movie wants from me. So this is for <laughs> the uh, the kid who never grew up, you know? But oh, I hate adult, those people. Right? It's the adult who's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're annoying to be friends with. This is true. <laughs> yeah. Um. So basically, now we've got the the truck full of killer robots is on its way to earth and then our uh i think that at some point um dennis hopper comes around to the idea that like i'm not going to stand in the way if you're too you know budding romance between you two youngsters yeah you know you get in the escape pod and take off and i'm gonna drive this thing into the sun no he's not gonna do that no he's gonna crash it into the atmosphere with all these robots on right burn them up Yeah. yeah 
That's the plan. Burn them all up. And then meet him in Florida. Yeah, there is like a, he has to fight New York. like four of them or something on the outside of the ship. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know? Still got a machine gun. Because, I Some mean, lasers. I guess that's the thing I'm saying is that the movie is full of like. Space C4. There's a lot of incident, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, tons, tons. Yeah. It's just there's always something always happening. Always something, yeah. But it's like it's not organic no. to the plot. It really feels like it doesn't. It's just like we're gonna do this, and now this is happening, and now we're gonna and do then this. They end and up back this. in the chairs. Yeah. And then, I don't know. It's just a lot it's of like, contrivance. Yeah. 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 The script is not good. <sighs> but they do end up like uh, saving the day. They end up burning these goddamn robots. Yeah. Up. He drives. He flips it in reverse and drives the truck backwards so that all the uh, containers get burned up and tossed mm-hmm. away, and then. I thought that was, there was a scene where um, Dennis Hopper has, you know, he sent the, uh, the, the two lovebirds away mm-hmm. and he remains behind. He's planting like C4 charges or yes. something on the ship. You thought it was going to be a Armageddon moment? Yeah. Cause I thought he was <laughs> going to like, okay, I'm going to steer this thing. I'm going to crash it myself. Yeah. You know, some kind of self-sacrifice Heroic, kind of thing. Yeah. You know? Because I think like they don't have this, the heater's still broken. There's no oxygen or something on the ship. I can't There's remember. no window. There's no window yeah. on the ship. Yeah. Like they send an alien through the window. But then you yeah. couldn't have Barbara Crampton. That's right. She shows up <laughs> because obviously it's a Stuart Gordon movie, so yeah. she's going to make an appearance later on. You but gotta. I, mm-hmm. I guess what I'm saying in this scene was that the uh, he's on the outside of the ship trying to fight these robots, mm-hmm. and the space the the escape shuttle uh, comes back right. Like yeah, instead yeah. of escaping, they come back and they angle the engine so they can blast the robots. Right. And it was just kind of like, huh, that's uh, you, you got like eight robot, eight of these killer robots. These are the right. worst things ever. They, uh, you know, they're going to take over the earth. Like, and oh. <laughs> yeah. One little jet engine gets rid of them. I mean, I guess that's it, right? That's mm-hmm. the thing that like kills them a fire or yeah. a jet engine off yeah. of a spaceship. It's like, you can't survive that. It's over. Of course, how Dennis Hopper's tether uh, There's a lot of questions that, here, Colin. Yep. I always thought I'm like, is he too close? Is he gonna get burned up? Too? <laughs> yeah, I thought the same thing because yeah. he's flipping him off, like, ha ha, you fuckers. Uh, yeah, yeah. doesn't the, even say that. Yeah, could have. He just flips him off. Just flips him off. And then there's the space C4 explosion again. Explosion space. Yeah. All right. There's a lot of scenes in there's this. No where, explo- where, <laughs> okay, yeah. well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, but it's a fantasy space movie. Although it does all the gravity shit. That, yeah. Like, yeah, they can't breathe because there's no oxygen, not no oxygen, no yeah. oxygen, no explosion. Like it's not, you can't, no sound in space. Dude, can't do right? it. It's not very dramatic, but can't you do know, it. yeah, oh, fine. I mean it can be, but not in 1996. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think there's um, a lot of scenes where it seemed like the like Stephen Dorff at one point reacted to uh, uh, like the the black rock was about to strike the side <laughs> of the ship. Yeah. In a very like, oh my God! There's a black rock about to hit the side of the ship. You know, um, that it was like I don't think the tone of the movie is that. You know, like he shot a lot of right. stuff. It's almost yeah. like you can feel the edit of this movie without the music on it. Was like uh, very like we're gonna choose that. You know, take because it's more dramatic. Okay, you right. know, but it's like it's too dramatic for the, yeah. the tone of the movie. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah, if it, it does kind of, it feels like they picked the wrong shots for this. It's like, give me another one that's a little higher, give me one that's a little lower. They took all yeah. the high ones and and put it in this movie. But it's, they they also had like tales to those scenes where it was like, you know, we're gonna hang on like Dennis Hopper's dramatic, you know, expression and close up as the camera pushes in dramatic expression. Yeah, and say, so, <laughs> I mean, but they, I don't know, it just feels off. It's it, it you know, it, it does. It's all off. Even the way like Stephen Dorff is talking. Like, I don't believe their relationship. He's not quite a good actor in this movie. No. Um, that feels off. <laughs> I think at one point, Debbie Mayer's arm is just like, woo, all right, we're safe again, as they sit mm. back on the... Like, none of yeah. this, their they're dialogue like, is... They're like, well, I'm glad that's over. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yes. Yeah. The dialogue is very pat, very boilerplate right. for stuff like this. I'm glad to be this. back on the ship. Like, yeah. it's very it's not, flat. There's no... Adv- yeah. Like, it's very, very flat dialogue. Mm. Well, see, this is interesting because, like, Stuart Gordon was, like, he came from the Chicago's Organic Theater. Mm. So he's a theater director. Theater director, obviously, uh, you know, very actor focused you know and yeah. performance focused so what happened here <laughs> you know 
I mean, we don't know if this movie, I guess, you know, unless Holly, if you research this, what did he have control over the edit or did somebody else like take it away from him and cut the movie together and like, we're using that take, you know, or whatever. Not Maybe. that I, not that I read. So this is, we're for all intents and purposes, a Stuart Gordon movie. Yeah, this was like, his vision. This was... It just feels like maybe it was too big for him, maybe, or something. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe his ideas were too big for even the $25 million budget at this point. Hmm. But $25 million in 96, come on. Yeah, that's a lot, a lot of money. Of budget. That is a lot of money. Because mm-hmm. I think that was more than Fortress, even. They're like, no, this it is It was, be even, because yeah. of the success of Fortress. They're like, oh, mm-hmm. well, here's some extra money for space truckers. <laughs> yeah, it feels like that was like a $12 million movie or something. Yeah. Like, well, I wonder if this was, was, would this have been the biggest budgeted movie I mean, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, obviously, he mm-hmm. didn't have direct right. uh, influence on that mm-hmm. he had in his career. I wonder. Um, seems like a lot for Stuart Gordon. $25 million. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That seems like too much. Yeah. And Gordon. after Maybe that, that's it why. was like, that's why he retreated back to doing yeah. like lower independent movies. Like, screw it. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do character movies after this yeah. <laughs> because. Uh, it's like he's more resourceful when he has a smaller budget. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Or maybe he can't concentrate on things he wants to concentrate because it's a $25 million budget and he's just like, there's, I, there's, there's too much everywhere. pressure. There's too, and, much, yeah. there's too maybe. much pressure from the investors. I mean, he may not be able to uh, focus his attention on everything. And so we get stuff like this. Who knows? Yeah, maybe. Oh, filmmaking, yeah, it's a complicated process with a lot of people. So who knows? Yeah, I know. But, it's harder than I think, like, you know, a lot of people give it credit for. Right. But, you, yes. know, it, it, you know, mm-hmm. even. Even our heroes, I think, sometimes mm-hmm. wade in over their heads. Uh, so yeah. the end of this movie, I guess, because mm-hmm. uh, we're like, okay, we've killed the alien menace, and our heroes got away, but it yeah. still keeps going. They made it to Earth. Yeah, that's thank the, God. That's the mission, get to Earth to save, um, well, not to save, but so that um, Debbie Mazar can see her mom. Yes. Who turns out to be Barbara Crampton, mm-hmm. who looks spectacular. Yeah, because mm-hmm. she's been like cryogenically frozen. That's right. She looks that way now. She looks I the mean, same. I mean, she yeah. does. She yeah. looks the exact she has same. Aged very well. Mm-hmm. She was cryogenically frozen. I like she the fact that Barbara Crampton, uh, like she, because she has basically a second wind career. Mm-hmm. Like oh, yeah. you know, in her later years, is now in movies like all the fucking time. Yeah, these yep. low budget uh, horror movies. Um, Didn't she do that Castle Freak remake? Yep. Yeah, yeah, I think she produced it. I don't yeah. know if she's in it, but she produced that, and yeah. she was in a movie called Jacob's Wife, not yep. too long as a lead with mm-hmm. Larry Fessenden. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, not too long ago. Um, but I mean, a lot of stuff. She's still working, all because I think she was in uh, Your Next was the movie yeah. that really like brought her uh, back. Mm-hmm. Or I think she had taken time off to like raise her kids or something, and then like came back in. But uh, yeah, so obviously she's part of the Stuart Gordon, uh, you know, mm-hmm. universe. Yeah, theater <laughs> company, yeah. right? That he keeps bringing back. Now with a Brooklyn accent. Mm-hmm. And that means that even though uh, Dennis Hopper had to <laughs> give up Debbie Bazar, he can still romance her Love mother. at first sight, Colin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Love at first sight. It wouldn't have been made more sense if she was was older. I know he's kind of like, well, I can't have you, but so I get almost the next best thing with your mom mm-hmm. who looks like this at whatever age, but... And whatever. I guess they. <laughs> I, I guess it's just one of those. As like, Debbie Mazar would say in this movie, it's very creepy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, no, there you go. It's, it's good. It's her dialogue. It's, on this movie. But it's good for all of them, right? Because that way we end they with a all happy. Stick together. Yeah. Everybody's paired yeah. off and, and then happy. We can blow up the president. Yeah, that's the right. President. <laughs> Don't forget about blowing up the president. Yeah, he brings them a big suitcase of money to shut them up. Okay, but who is the president? Oh, it's it's the commander from earlier. Yeah. Yeah. He, the one that one fried Charles Dance. Yeah, that wanted to take over Earth with the robots. Who we yep. thought was going to be a bigger bad guy, yeah. but who doesn't show up until this point in the movie again. Yeah. So now he's the president, and he's yeah. like, here, shut up, and I'll give you So because at this point, it's like been in Earth news, right? Like <laughs> yeah. the, this, these two truckers and a waitress. Right, yeah, because what was the thing yeah. we heard? It was just like, two, two truckers, truckers and a waitress? waitress. Yeah. <laughs> Save the world Save this the world. afternoon. <laughs> just, From an invasion <laughs> wow. force. Yeah. Although I'm not entirely sure what happened there. I think, if I have this right, mm-hmm. he was sending his uh, killer robots to kill everyone on Earth if the election didn't go right or whatever right. that would make him president of the world. Right. Uh, but he did. That was his insurance policy. So right. thank God they were actually able to foil his plan. Mm-hmm. And then instead of killing them, which any normal psychotic would do, uh, he's like, I'm trying to pay you off. Yeah. Or no, he did try to kill them he did. because yeah. he put a bomb in the yeah, money. He was briefcase. like, I'm going to pay you off. But, and But Stephen Dorff's morals are so strong 
that he, yes. he throws it out and a window. We're not taking this money. Yeah. Throws it on the window, window, lands on a limo, right as he presses the button to explode the, the suitcase. Oh, the irony. Kills himself. Goodbye, yeah. President. There you go. So, I mean, that like... Someone just tried to kill the president. I think it was us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we fragged Scraggs or whatever his name yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, Was it Scraggs? Sags. Yes. Sags. EJ That's right. Sags. Because Charles yeah. Dance, I remember thinking about that because Charles Dance kept on fondling the uh, hearts of the uh Hearts, the creatures quote unquote. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah they were <laughs> filled with the yeah yeah mm-hmm. those were ball sacks colin yeah, <laughs> fondling a ball sack charles mm-hmm. dance knew it too yeah i think he did he he i think doing. he did yeah <laughs> it's a great role for charles it dance. is it is charles dance so. completion is what see we're him. gonna get out of this movie yeah. so earlier when you said who are the stars of this movie charles i dance. should have said charles dance yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let's be real <laughs> Um, but yeah, I mean, it all ends in bliss, right? They're taking yeah, off they're... in their new uh, space truck, all four of them, on a space shuttle. I was like, it's a shuttle. Yeah, yeah but I think their their truck was in the middle of it. I think yeah. that's how you break the atmosphere. And once you're up there. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. They're going to be sure. space trucking too. Space happy, truckers too. Big happy family. Were they expecting a space truckers too? Space truckers too, mother truckers. <laughs> mother truckers. <laughs> right? Yeah. Obviously. I think so. Yeah. Why not? I mean, they had to like be hoping that this movie was going to do well, right? I don't think there was a plan of Space Truckers too, just a hope and a prayer. <laughs> yeah, which all came crashing yep. down. When so that means that Lots HBO had to stop step in because no distributor would Not touch one. this movie because they're like one dude, uh, Stewart. I don't know if anyone told you, but uh, you can clearly see the wires and everything. Oh yeah, like we're past that in this point in the professional movie making. Yeah, uh, we can't very we, visible wires. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at a certain point we in, got to the end of the movie, I'm just like, they don't care anymore. They're not, yeah. They don't even try to hide them. Because I saw, I'm like, one, two, three. Yeah. yeah. There's four wires in this. 1996. Very visible wires. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. I like, yeah. When yeah. the one bad guy got knocked backwards and he has to do that backwards spin. And everybody's yeah. like, oh, there's a wire. There's a wire. Yep. Yeah. So many That's wires. Wonderful. Yeah. There you go. Space truckers. Space truckers. <laughs> Space truckers. Well, I guess, uh, listener, you're wondering whether or not we'd recommend that you watch this movie. And I tell you what. We're going to tell you, but first, before we do that, we're going to uh, read some of your mail, and in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman, and his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters! Masters, the mail! I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising. Rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. That's all we got. Got nothing. Oof. <laughs> I'm still exhausted from Hard Ticket to Hawaii. I love you, yeah, Igor. Yeah. Uh, you know. yeah. Igor, watch yourself, Igor. You're going to end up a square. Uh, square, square, a square, square Igor. A, yeah. <laughs> I think that one, but he's also like. His crate is very He's like spacious. water. He finds his level. Like he, yeah. he will. Here we go. He will here adhere to he's any like shape. water. Yeah. He will adhere to any shape yeah. that he is in. So yeah. he could be a square Igor. And he has a very spacious crate. Yes. We're generous. We're not cruel. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's very true. Yeah. Uh, well, we want to let you know how you can participate on this uh, interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Freak Show. Or Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram for the time of your life at Saturday Night Freak Show. About tonight's movie, Space Truckers. Uh, Tony Bradshaw writes in and says, Stephen Dorff must really be a vampire. Yeah, he does. Age well, he He's, has. I. Yeah, What's the last thing you saw? I forget this seen, guy I uh, immediately. Cold Street Manor. No, uh, I haven't uh, seen him recently. He was yeah. in uh, the third season of True Detective not too long ago, and they aged him up in uh, some of it. Yeah, he does. He oh, he was. Looked, he, I forgot about that. Kind of the same throughout his life. He's aged well. Yeah, sure. He's doing all right. All right. Well, We're no experts on <laughs> Stephen Dorff. Uh, Nelson Nascimento says uh, that this movie is Dukes of Hazard in space, but not quite. It's more like the truck stop in Spaceballs turned into a feature length movie. Uh-huh. The usually reliable Stuart Gordon delivers some so bad it's good campy weirdness, and at least there's a Barbara Crampton cameo, but you're probably better off with Ice Pirates. 
Ooh. Ice pirates. Huh? Ice pirates. All right. I have not I'm listening. That. I feel like someone. I feel like Stuart Gordon was like, I really like Star Wars and I really like Convoy. What can I do with this? Mm, yeah. <laughs> uh, Travis Legler says this was a movie that I never got to see, but I could never watch a VHS that didn't have the preview on it. On paper, this sounds like a fun party movie to watch with snacks and friends. I hope that's what it is. However, given that it didn't make back the twenty three million dollars of its budget. Perhaps people didn't think so. Mm. Who said that? Travis Legler. Oh, Travis. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You might be onto something, sir. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Michael Whitaker says this one's been popping up on the streaming services lately. Every time I go looking for something to watch, mm -hmm. maybe it's a sign. When I went to Wikipedia, <laughs> I was sign, pleasantly right. surprised to see this film is directed by Stuart Gordon, who made two of my favorite movies, Reanimator and The Wonderful Ice Cream Suit, two movies that couldn't be less like each other. It's a great title. Holy it shit. is a great title. <laughs> It, it makes me curious. I'm curious. Yeah, yeah, I was curious like, I'm curious, it. and I'll never hear a title like that again. <laughs> no. Well, Gorilla Strange wants us to know that uh, Space Truckers was an awful, amazing experience. <laughs> DJ jo Dog Manfish says, or I like to call it 90s Pluto Nash. It, oh, Ooh. my God. I was yeah. going to say that in my wrap up. Yep. But yeah, I... <laughs> We'll, we'll we'll circle back to Pluto Nash. <laughs> Wasn't Pluto Nash in the nineties? It's two thousand two. Holy shit! Okay. Yeah, wow. I looked it up because I this movie reminded me of it while I was watching it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, a lot of research on like, Pluto I'm, Nash. Right. I'm being triggered back to Jesus. Pluto Nash. <laughs> Uh, X Hall Kiwi says, I feel like I should have seen this doing my Stephen Dorff phase, but I'm drawing a blank. Ah. You had a Stephen Dorff phase? Yeah. You all have tell, names, tell me more. Yeah. 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 How are you? Yeah. <laughs> what did this include? What was included in this yeah. phase? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I want more. I want yeah. more details there. Right back in. <laughs> well, last week we watched a movie called Hard Ticket to Hawaii. Yeah. And, uh, I miss it. <laughs> we, exper we experienced a religious moment called Hard Ticket to Hawaii. So. That's very true. Yeah. But uh, Pat Hetfield says, I was introduced to the amazing cinema of Andy Sidaris through his movie Seven. Yes, there was a Seven before David Fincher. Mm -hmm. There was even a shooting the swordsman scene before Raiders of the Lost Ark. Is <laughs> anyone who knows who's seen that movie? It was made in 1979, and he says, maybe you want to give, or I don't want to get into that at some point. Okay. There yeah. was a poster for Seven in Hard mm -hmm. Ticket to Hawaii. It's the one that starred William Smith. Yeah. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, uh, sadly, Julie Strain, who we talked about on last mm -hmm. week's show, passed away in 2021 due to early onset dementia from a fall she had in her youth, and I remember her from a bunch of low-rent movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. That's sad. Uh, Peter Gatt says the best performance in Hard Ticket to Hawaii was the fake snake. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hands down. <laughs> uh, Joey Blythe says just when you thought it was safe to take a pee. Oh, boy. Yep. Yeah. And he oh, says that's Ghoulies. Line. Oh, wait, the wrong movie. And he says on a totally unrelated mm -hmm. note, I suddenly remembered a movie last night called I'm a Cyborg, but that's okay. You can find it. <laughs> I think you can get a kick out of it. That's the best that's title great. I've ever heard. That's oh. great. Because it sounds like a self-affirmation. Like yeah. yeah, it sounds self like I'm a Cyborg, but that's okay. And doggone it. People love <laughs> yeah. it. Isn't that a... Um, Park Chan Wook movie? I don't know. I need to oh, see it now, know. though. I, I think it is. It. It's like the one movie in this filmography that, like, uh, yeah, <laughs> I love dropped it. Off I am already need to see it. <laughs> uh, Chris Huddleston see wrote in after we uh, posted a picture of Donna Spear from mm. uh, Hard Ticket to Hawaii, and he said, "Isn't that Meredith Baxter Burney from Family Ties?" Probably with the sunglasses on. It's like, yeah, you yeah. can kind of see oh, yeah. the resemblance. Yeah. Uh, action dude action gave dude. us a before and after. So strap in. He says, <laughs> I've never heard of this movie. Oh, I'm wow. looking forward to the review. <laughs> I'm Cut counting two. on the, I don't want to hear about this movie anymore. <laughs> I'm counting on the four of you to determine if it's a hidden cinematic gem or if it's a baby Ruth, like turd bar floating in the shallow end of the pool, bring it. <laughs> and then, all right. I love a son of I a, love a swamp mother. I hate this movie. It's not even in my so bad it's good category. A puppet show performed by geriatric nuns would have had better production value. Nudity is no excuse for bad entertainment. Take the great Game of Thrones or superb Shameless, for example. Okay, we told you not oh to watch God. it alone. Yeah, <laughs> we told you. <laughs> I think we oversold that movie. It's a bad movie, I, but a entertainment that's level. That's what makes it so great. Yeah. It's through the roof. It's a shit movie. We yeah. know this. Yeah. yeah. We told you not to watch it alone. <laughs> <laughs> but we, thank we you. We can only do so much, yes. Yeah, that's right. 
Uh, but thank you all very much for writing in. Seriously, we appreciate it every week. Um, and now we're going to tell you whether or not you should watch tonight's movie, Space Truckers, mm. starting with John. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go first tonight because I'm going to keep it short. I do not like this movie. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember I watched this. Uh, I, I watched this once when I was much younger, when it was on HBO. I probably saw it when it was premiering. That's when I caught it. Um, when the robots came back in this movie, I was like, holy shit, those used to freak me out. Um, because I do like the design of them and, you know, the way they move and everything and all that. But, God, this movie, this script sucks. Um, the dialogue between these characters is very flat and um, not good. It's sh I don't know if it's shot bad, but the composition is bad. Um, I don't like any... I don't like these characters. Um, this is a few, you know, I chuckled a few times. There's a few funny moments. But other than that, Charles Dance is the reason you see this movie. Mm -hmm. Just uh, find his scenes on YouTube, and I think that's really all you need, because you shouldn't... I don't think you need to watch the rest of this movie. I was, I was bored. It's not fun. They're not really doing anything. It's derivative. No, I don't like this movie. Don't watch it. Uh, Colin. Oh boy, go for it. Um, what do you think? Buckle up. The well, the movie that like for some reason this is going to sound weird, but the <laughs> movie that this reminded me of was Solo. I uh, because. The uh, it, because of the speechless. Yeah. I thought of like twenty other movies that this reminded me of, yeah. and did not hit Solo. But Solo irritated me. I thought the failing of Solo was the same failing of this movie. I'm like watching it, and I'm sitting there going like, "Oh, there's some competent special effects work in this." I mean, aside from the wires and all that stuff, but like, <laughs> yeah. there's some competent design yeah. stuff as far as the monsters and Charles Dance's suit. You know, I wasn't a fan of the production design, but again, I'm like, I don't like this look. Mm -hmm. You know that they did in the 90s so I'm like okay but past that you know it's like there's some good performances there's some good scenes but what's wrong with it and the the problem is the same problem that solo had you got flat characters and the movie is comprised of incidents yeah. that are just stacked on top of each other it's like a chapter serial where it's like and then this happened and then this happened and then this happened and then this happened it's plot with no story the story is like you know two or three sentences yeah you know they got it's a log the, line and that's yeah. it. um and the characters are just not there you know they're they're sketched in and their types you know it's like you got the truck driver who he's you know blue collar dude right and who, they give him a few lines to like okay we kind of get who he's trying yeah. to be and, everything, and then he wants the girl and the girl wants somebody else and it's like okay you know but that i mean that could make for something interesting if it right. was and people have developed. done and made it interesting yeah. before yeah this was not that movie this one just wants uh you know it favors action but the action if you don't really it just keeps piling it on that's i think why it comes off as boring because i guess i was bored too it's like okay this is just going to keep on Incident followed by incident followed by incident. Yeah, and Dennis Hopper's not very compelling in this movie. No, he's a compelling actor, but in this movie, mm -hmm. yeah. But I didn't, I didn't find anything wrong with his performance. Yeah. It's just maybe the casting, you know. It's Probably. like, well, maybe he's at odds with this movie. But Charles Dance is clearly the unlikely, uh, you know, spot on. He was the guy to hire to play that part and yeah. relished it, you know. Um, so would I recommend that you see it specifically just for that or some of the design work? I don't think you can. I, I mean, as a whole, it's like, you're going to, you're, I think you're going to find it boring to actually sit through, uh, the movie. But, uh, I mean, if you've been intrigued by what you've heard this far uh, about it, you know, it's, uh, like <laughs> one of those, been, I want to know what you heard. <laughs> it's a, well, it's a, it's one of those, um, where would you categorize it? It's like a below, it's a subpar, like nineties science fiction Colin, movie i give it one dragon one dragon one dragon out of out of five ooh, dragons. ouch okay well that's mm -hmm. yeah um i'm gonna say that you skip uh space truckers <laughs> michaela <laughs> i was calling you... space balls a couple times tonight <laughs> yeah that's that's well, i was joke. gonna call it space trucking but yeah i yeah. have to correct myself mentally every time uh no no to space truckers uh michaela what do you think I yeah, there's this this subgenre of movies in the late nineties and early two thousands where it's this obnoxious, over the top, in your face, wacky sci fi futuristic comedy. Yeah. And I 
Don't fucking like, like them. Tank girl. Keep them away from me. Yeah. So like we're never gonna see that on the freak show. Is a promise that I'm. No. Oh shit. Uh, <laughs> oh no, that's good. No, we're not. No. Okay. And uh, no. Uh, you know. I mean, I haven't seen it, so who knows? I was gonna say, don't say that because Sean will bring it. <laughs> what I would, you don't want this movie? I would put Super Mario Brothers in that category. Yep. Like, yep. I hate the tone. I hate yep. the look. I hate everything about it. Like, it just it, rub, it rubs me the wrong way. I just don't like it. It's not for me. I think the closest I can get to this type of movie is Rocket Man. Like that kind of has a similar sense of humor. The Rocketeer? Rocket Man Rocket from Man. the nineties with Harlan um Harlan Williams? Yes. <laughs> it's a nineties comedy about him dreaming to be an astronaut right. with a chimpanzee and it has this very same kind of sense of humor and pacing and Yep. And it, that's the closest I can get to this. Like <laughs> that and it's just not like I saw Pluto Nash and this they are very similar movies. And that was a big budget movie that flopped and it had the same kind of problem, Colin, of just being a bunch of little incidents. And I just, this aesthetic, like, so off-putting to me. Like, I appreciate the, the time capsule that it is. I appreciate you can look at a movie like this and know exactly what, like, five-year span it came out in. And, like, it is a distinct style and I like that. I like that we can have filmmakers take crazy weird chances like this and I think it's important. It's, just a taste I don't enjoy. Mm -hmm. So I respect its place in cinema history, but it's not for me. I don't like it. I found the movie kind of boring too. Uh, Charles Dance was great, mm -hmm. but they should have pushed his character and his scenes farther. So I'm going to have to pass on it. Farther than the, than the wind up penis. Well, we show it to us. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a Stuart Gordon movie. And if it's not, if it's, <laughs> and if it's not a real dick, then what does it matter? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, if it's a mechanical right, right. add-on thing, why right, can't yeah. you show it? It just, it just needs to be like a piston movie. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Like, it, it doesn't have to look anything like an actual like dick. Yeah. Right. Sort, yeah. So, yeah, come on. You know, <laughs> Holly, what would you think? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm gonna have to agree with you, um, specifically because I just watched. The Pam and Tommy episode where we uh, see Tommy Lee's talking dick. Oh yeah, that happens in that show, and it's weird and hilarious. So I want to see the mechanical chainsaw dick. Like I just want to. Um, <laughs> Copyright twenty twenty two. Yeah, I want to see it. I want to see it. By the way, the prosthetics in Tom Pam and Tommy are spectacular. <laughs> they are okay. phenomenal. Oh, yeah, anyway. still, that's uh, it's on my amazing. List. <laughs> um. Yeah, I am absolutely on board with all of you. Uh, Travis Legler really summed it up correctly that the description of this movie or like the thought of this movie, the premise, the er everything behind it, you would think it would make something worth watching. Because I was like, OK, Stuart Gordon, we've got Dennis Hopper. I mean, space truckers, right? Like it just sounded like it was going to be what we needed it to be. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, I was duped. I was maloned. Um, <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> it happened. It happens to all of it us. It happens yep. to all of us. Um, I'm sorry because I. It, it was just your time. Yeah, it was, we all bring time, shit. Yeah. You know, like Malone was my time. This was my time. I'm they sorry. Can't, they can't be, all be hard to get to a while. No. But it's better that it wasn't a movie that you're like, oh man, I'm gonna break. Oh yeah, no, no, no. I love and the, no. This <laughs> one's this one's been yeah. on my list because it's yeah, something it didn't I break your heart. No, yeah. yeah, I had never seen this, and I just thought I was like, well, that sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I think if this had, I think if they had amped up Charles Dance's role in this, made it all about this spectacular half robot villain, it would have been a way better movie. Um, you know, talking about these types of movies, Michaela, I think the most palatable one is Demolition Man. Yeah, that's, I almost that's don't even one. consider. I, I know, know it's hard. I know because, it is. Yeah, I know it technically is that same type of movie. Yeah, but. Like, it's so much less assaulting to your eyes. Oh, for sure. You know, like, for it's much sure. more easier on your eyes mm -hmm. as a movie. Yeah, I'm with you. I feel like, mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm sure there's other ones that, like, I probably do like, but I feel like Demolition Man is really the only one you yeah. need to watch. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's a messy movie, and not in a good way. If it was a good, messy movie, then I'd like the hell out of it, but mm -hmm. it's not good. It's it's not comprehensive. The editing's terrible. The effects should have been better than they were, considering the budget. Some of them I was okay with, but for the most part, it was just shit. Um, taglines. I'm going to say our taglines. <laughs> We've got Earth's Only Hope, no. which is awful and misleading. Yeah. Um, the other one is they've shipped everything from square pigs to anti-gravity beer, but now they've got a load of real trouble. Mm. Yeah, I know. I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> Too bad this couldn't have just been over the top in space. Yeah. That's exactly. what it should have been. You know? yeah, yeah, I want it to be over the top in space. Yeah. Um, Copyright 
over the yeah. top in space. Twenty twenty two San Andreas. We're just gonna call it that. Just, just keep going. Money. That'll print mm-hmm. money. Over the space top. Over the top. <laughs> over the. We'll, we'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll, we'll workshop it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this movie sucked. It was very disappointing. <laughs> I, I definitely don't recommend it. I'm 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 disappointed in Stuart. I think he could have done better. I think maybe he just. I think the budget was too big for him. Mm-hmm. I think he's better on small scale. Mm. Yeah, um, that's a big pass for me mm-hmm. on Space yeah, Truckers. Right. Well, that's unfortunate. Universal, yeah. don't watch this movie. Sorry, guys. Uh, well, too bad we couldn't get this message to you before you watched it. <laughs> so sorry. But thank you for playing yeah. along. Yes, we, we appreciate it. it. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed Charles Dance. Yep. Right. Yes. Right. If nothing else. I do like that his uh, once he became like the half robot, his new name was Captain Macanudo. Mm. Was it? Oh, because it's the cigar. cigar. Yeah. yeah. I like that. <laughs> okay. Very nice. Because uh, that uh, what was it Tom Ham or whatever the writer. Ted Man. <laughs> Ted, Ted Man. Tom, Tom, Tom Ham, Ham is yeah. a great Tom name. Yeah. Tom, Tom Which Ham. I was Tom disappointed. He, he Tom wrote, Ham, how you doing? He Tom did the writing Ham. for the Hatfields and McCoys, which has really good yeah. character. Yeah, yeah it does. Deadwood. Like, yeah. He, yeah. Of, he used to be a like, National Lampoon writer. Yeah. I was like, he's yeah. better this than is, this. This is a flat ass script. Yeah. Yeah. Sleep at the wheel. Yeah. He's better than this. Sorry. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, if you stayed with us that long, you got that little uh, trivia nugget. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now, it means you don't have to watch this movie. <laughs> we're also going to find out what we're watching next week, and that means we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by... Michaela, what are we watching next week? I think it's a full-length movie. Oh, it's 70... Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> it's 75 minutes long. Okay. That's a good start. I love it. I love it. it. I, love I, it. I think it's, we're watching it's, a full-length it's, movie. It's about the length of a Game of Thrones episode. We're going to watch Doom Asylum. Doom Asylum. Don't, okay. If, if you don't know anything about it, don't look anything up. Okay. All right. yeah. I know yeah. nothing. Yep. yep. Okay. Yeah. Doom Asylum. Yep. Next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show, we hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.